What's up everybody and welcome to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to live stream, but not your regular boring live stream. No, that's because in this video, we are going to be, uh -oh. yes, we are going to be live streaming as a cartoon with the technique. I'm going to show you today. You can live stream on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch gaming, and pretty much anywhere that live streaming can be done. And I'm also going to show you how you can use this same technique for your Zoom meetings. So if you are an educator, your Zoom classes are about to get much, much more interesting. So let's get straight right into the tutorial. To do this, we're going to need three tools. The first is Adobe Character Animator, which we're going to be using for the cartoon. Next, we need a way to send our video feed from Character Animator into our streaming software. So there is a tool called NDI or Network Device Interface. So what this does is that it allows you to send video feed from one application to another. Even if the application is on another computer, as long as you're in the same network and they both support the tool, you can send video feed between these two applications. Finally, we're going to need a streaming software. And in my case, I'll be using OBS for this tutorial. And the links to everything I've mentioned are in the description. You can head down there to download them. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install all the tools we need. So let's start with NDI tools. If you wanna head over to the website in the description and download the version for your operating system, whether you're using Windows or Mac. It comes with several plugins, but uh, there are two major plugins we're interested in, and I'm gonna show you that. So once you click on your installation file, you want to make sure you select the Adobe CC plugin and also the web input plugin because these are the two plugins we're going to be using. Once you're done with that, you can head over to OBS's website to download the version for your system. And if you're just using this for Zoom, you don't need OBS, so you can ignore this step. In the intro video that I showed you, I was using this puppet of myself. If you want to know how to make one for yourself, I have a tutorial on this and the link to that is in the description. But for the rest of this tutorial, we're not going to use this puppet just so that you can easily follow along with me. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project and call it live stream. And once my project is created, I'm going to open our welcome window and you do that just by clicking windows and welcome. And then I'll select one of these already pre-made characters. Uh, why don't we use the unicorn character so that we can do a little educational demo? All right. So I have my puppet loaded into the scene. It looks a little bit plain right now, so I think we're going to fix that. And I will do that by importing a background of a classroom that I got from freepick.com. So once I have that imported into the project, I'll just drag that down to my timeline. And that already looks much better. So let's adjust the scale. You want to make sure that it is selected and then just play around with the scale. You can increase or decrease it until it looks right to you. I'm also going to do the same for the puppet. I'll make sure it's selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and just move its position around and change the scale a little bit so that it fits properly within the scene. All right. I don't know about you, but that looks much better now. So the next thing we're going to do is move to our streaming workspace. And to do this, you simply click on the stream tab right here at the top. What this does is that it streamlines your timeline for live streaming to make it easy for you to access certain things when you're live streaming. So most noticeably, you're going to notice that you now have this control panel right here at the bottom. And when you click on these buttons, it triggers animations on your puppet. For example, if I click on this mouthpiece here, our puppet does a wall animation. And if I click on these hands here, our puppet does this grounding kind of animation. And depending on what puppet you have, the animations you see here and triggers you see here would be different. And if you want to know how to create your own triggers, I'm going to do a video at a later tutorial to show you in details how you can create one of these triggers for your own puppet. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and we're just going to use the triggers that already comes inbuilt with the puppet. And if you need to rearrange the layouts of this button, you can do that by simply clicking on the layout tab right here. And this now lets you rearrange the buttons as you see fit. Any parameter you see right here on the right, which is highlighted with the dotted lines, you can also drag in here to change while you're live streaming. For example, I'm going to put the Y position here. And now this lets me, while I'm streaming, do things like probably make my character bounce and move the character around. So this can be helpful while you're live streaming. All right, we're almost done with character animator. 
the final thing we need to do is just make sure that we're sending our video signal into NDI. And to do that, you just simply need to click on this little icon here that looks like live. And once you click that, that's it. Your video signal is now going into the NDI output. To verify that it's actually doing this, you can click on control on Windows or options on Mac and then click on the icon. That is going to bring up this preference windows. And what you want to make sure is ensure that enable Mercury transmit is enabled and you want to make sure that your video device says NDI output. And once these are set, then you're all set and you're ready to go to your live streaming software. All right, we're now ready to start having some fun with this. But before we do that, let's just make sure that the NDI webcam plugin we downloaded is running fine. And to do that, you simply just search for the plugin on your Windows app menu. And on the Mac, you can find this on your app dock. When you click on it, it opens to the system tray right here at the bottom. So just right click on it. And then where it says desktop, make sure that character animator is selected as your source. And then also you want to just make sure you check your video resolution to whatever is more appropriate for you. In my case, I'd put it at 1080p because I want HD video quality. All right, now that this is running, let's actually start using this. I'm going to start by showing you how to use this on Zoom because this is one of the easiest. And then after that, we're going to move on to live streaming. And to use it on Zoom is quite simple. Just open up Zoom and head over where you have your camera. So it's the little arrow that's pointing up. And then what you want to do is select this camera input that says New Tech NDI. And once you've done so, you just want to start your video and voila. You now have your character animator input right here on Zoom and you can use this to excite your class. All right, and when I open character animator side by side, you can see that when I do actions here on character animator, it is happening in real time on Zoom, including my lip sync. So as I'm talking into my mic now, you can see it on Zoom, uh, lip syncing with the character all in real time. This could be a really, really cool way if you're a teacher for you to make your classrooms a lot more interesting. So definitely try this out. All right, now we're going to head over to OBS and I'm going to show you how you can set that up for live streaming to any platform. We want to go to OBS and click on this little plus sign right here. And then you want to click on video capture device. And then I'm going to give mine a name of CH to stand for character animator. But this can be anything that you please. Next, you want to head over to devices and select the same new tech NDI video source and just click on OK. And voila, as you can see, our feed from Character Animator is now here on OBS. And if I open them side by side, you can see that when I do actions on Character Animator, it's showing right now in real time on OBS. And even if I click on the triggers, you can see all of them on OBS all in real time. So things are looking good. The next thing we want to do is add audio source to OBS so we can have sound. And to do that in OBS is quite simple. I'm just going to click on the plus sign one more time and then I'm going to click on audio capture. And then I'm just going to call this my USB Yeti. That's the mic I'm using right now. And then I'm going to click on OK. And under the devices, I am going to just select my mic, which is the one right here. And then I'm going to say OK. So now when I scroll to the bottom, as you can see here, I have audio signal coming in. So we're looking good and we're almost ready to start live streaming. One thing we need to adjust on the mic is for latency. So normally you would notice that uh, with the uh, video and the audio, there might be a little bit of a lag, which could be a little bit annoying on your live stream. So to help fix that, uh, we can go in and add in some intentional delay on the audio. And to do that, just right click on the little gear icon right here and click on advanced audio properties. And then you can mess around with the different offsets to see what works best for you. But uh, I have seen that 300 milliseconds tends to work. At least for me, it works most times uh, when I set this up. So I'm going to just put a 300 milliseconds delay so that my audio and video are perfectly in sync. So now that we have that all set up, the final thing we need to do is just configure our streaming destination and we're ready to stream. And to do that, you want to click on settings right here. And then you want to go on to stream and then there are different sources that already comes pre-built into OBS. So you choose your respective source depending on where you want to stream to. Uh, for example, if I click on YouTube, 
uh, that is the streaming source. And then I need to get a key. And to get this key, just click on get live stream key. And it's going to open the YouTube dashboard where you can pull up this key from. And it does the same for all the other platforms too. It will take you directly to where you can get your key. And you just need to generate that, copy them and paste them right here where you say live stream key. And then you click OK. All right. So once you have this all set, you'll want to open OBS on the side and your character animator on another side just to make sure you're ready to actually start the live stream. I do advise to actually have two monitors to do this. That way it makes your workflow a little bit easier. So once you have that set up and you feel ready to stream, all you need to do is simply just click on the start streaming button and then your stream is going to go live and then you can head back to character animator and keep doing your different actions while the live stream goes on. All right. I hope that wasn't too hard to follow along. But now let me show you how to do some more advanced stuff with this. For example, I'm going to show you how you can combine a live character and an animated character together. And you can also use this same concept to use an animated character to stream your live games. One of the good things about NDI is that it supports alpha channels, which simply means transparency. So if I went ahead and turned off our background here, uh, the NDI should now respect that our character has no background in it. So this means I can now add this character as an overlay to anything in my live streaming. Instead of talking about it, why don't I go ahead and show you. To do this using OBS, we would have to install one additional plugin so that OBS can support NDI natively as opposed to just using a webcam plugin like we did earlier. So you want to head down to the description and download the plugin. And then once you've done that, restart OBS. All right. Once OBS is open, we want to go ahead and add our camera. So I'm going to click on video capture device and I'm going to name mine the name of my camera. And uh, you could use a webcam if you don't have a camera. But in my case, I'm using uh, this device that I got off of Amazon for quite cheap, about $20. And this allows me to connect the camera feed from my DSLR camera straight into my computer. And now I can have my HD quality video. So you can check it out. I have a link to that in the description. All right. So once you have your video feed, the next thing we want to do is bring in our character animate video into this. And this time around, we're going to do it using NDI and not the webcam plugin so that we can have that transparency that we want. And to do this, you want to head back to the plus sign and you should now see something that says NDI source because of the plugin we installed and just click on OK. And under the source, you just want to select character animator as our source and click on OK. And there we go. We now have our character animator pop it in here. But now, as you can see, it has transparency. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the edges just to scale that to fit in better to my scene. And now when I move around in character animator, you can see it also still moving in real time. Uh, but this time around, we have that transparency. So now a few things to help you with this. Obviously, if you're doing a live stream with two characters, you probably need two people to uh, help you out so that you can have a dialogue. So one way you can do this is by having somebody else, uh, because NDI works over the network, have another computer somewhere else and running your character animator there. Or uh, if you have them both on the same computer, you could uh, go to character animator and under cameras and mic right here, you could choose a separate camera. Like in my case, I have this USB video capture card with my main camera and I also have a webcam, which I can give to somebody else to use to control my character for me. Also, if you go under edit and preferences, you also have the option to select uh, whichever mic you want to use. So you could actually have a second microphone, which is used by whoever is controlling your puppet. So this way you have two people uh, doing your dialogue. But if you don't have two people, well, you can also just do it yourself. Let's go ahead and do a little demo of this. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Fun Time with Emmanuel. Today, we're going to be learning our ABCs and our one, two, threes. And we're joined by our very good friend, Mr. Rainbow Man. Can I get a whoop whoop? And if you'd like to do the same thing using Zoom, OBS has a virtual camera feature. So just enable that by clicking the button right here. And then when you head over to Zoom, you should now, when you go to select cameras, now see OBS as a camera source. So once you click on that, you're going to have your video on Zoom and you can go ahead and do the same thing. The only drawback to this is that between Zoom, OBS, Character Animator, you'd probably have a number of softwares running on your computer. Thank, right, you, thank for, you for... Um, I thought I was... All so right, th thank you. 
you know what, why don't you go ahead and do it? You, you do. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions for us, let us know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this, we welcome you to subscribe by hitting the subscribe button down below. And if you liked this video and enjoyed it, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It's obvious, everybody knows it. If you like a video, you hit the like button. Why would they, you like they a video it, buddy. They, and not you know what? hit the like why, button? Why don't I take over? They get it, they get it. Hit the like button if you like this video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Keep learning and hit the like button.